All right, everyone, today's build video is going to be a strictly anti-rogue build video designed around accessibility and helping the average player contend with being ganked, dealing as much damage as possible, and being safer in the Dark Zone. The composition is going to be three pieces of Banshee and two pieces of Lone Star, and none of these pieces have to be classified. If you do have pieces of classified gear that can fit into any of these slots, then it will simply boost the amount of main stats that you have, but again, none are required at all. You will simply lose a little bit of toughness or a little bit of damage, but the functionality and all the different bonuses that this build is built around will still remain the same. You also want the Ninja Bike Messenger Bag, and it's built around four pieces of Banshee, including that, and three pieces of Lone Star and an LMG. The stat composition of the build is four pieces of firearms gear and one piece of stamina gear with all stamina gear mods, but I'll go over that in just a second. Essentially, it doesn't matter which pieces have firearms as long as you have the ratio of four pieces of firearms gear to one piece of stamina gear. Moving on to individual pieces, we have the Ninja Bike Messenger Bag. The reason we have this is because of the exotic talent, which acts as a wild card, completing our three piece of Lone Star and our four pieces of Banshee simultaneously. The Ninja Bike Bag is rolled to health as a major attribute. That's a little bit flexible, but that's a lot of health, so you do, I believe, want to roll that. A minor attribute of ammo capacity, though because you have the two-piece bonus of Lone Star, you really don't need ammo capacity there. So something like Disrupt Resistance or Burn Resistance will also be pretty strong. Uh, and then it's rolled to Stamina. Next, we have our Lone Star Gloves, and the gloves are a little bit less flexible. Uh, there are a few different things you can roll here, but I believe that Critical Hit Chance, Skill Haste, and LMG Damage are the best three major attributes. You absolutely want LMG Damage, that is non-negotiable. Uh, but skill haste could be critical hit damage if you do want to prioritize raw damage output consistently instead of survivability. But I firmly believe that skill haste is one of the most overlooked stats in the game because it simultaneously will boost your damage and your survivability by a pretty decent margin. Next up, we have our holster, and holsters are pretty simple across the board. However, since we are using a belt-fed LMG, a possible alternative to skill haste would be reload speed, and each user can make their own determination of whether or not they feel that that's efficient. I believe that skill haste is a little bit better, but that may just be for my own personal playstyle, so reload speed is also a viable alternative here. I don't think that health is the best thing to roll on a holster, maybe even critical hit chance if you really want to prioritize crits, um, but I think it's more of a choice between skill haste and reload speed in this instance because of our weapon choice. Next up we have our knee pads and for this version of the build it's very straightforward with this slot. You want health as a major attribute, that's a no-brainer, and then for minor attributes I advise damage to elites, burn resistance, and shock resistance. I don't have that here, I have disrupt instead, um, but burn and shock resistance are two of the most valuable minor attributes on knee pads, especially for PvP. Damage to elites, since every environment in the game is a hybrid one, even in the dark zone you'll encounter NPCs, unless you're in something specialized like uh, skirmish, which is the only mode where you will not encounter NPCs, uh, that's the only place where damage to elites would be a dead stat. So I believe that damage to elites is a really positive thing to roll here. However, for a major attribute, health on this version is a no-brainer. Now, if you are wanting to prioritize a counter build to Predator's Mark, if you really are building this to not only counter rogues, but to counter rogue Predator's Mark players, then you will roll exotic damage resilience here. Next up, we have our Lone Star Mask, and I have opted to run Critical Hit Chance. However, if you are concerned, like with the knee pads, about Predator's Mark Rogue players in particular, you can roll Exotic Damage Resilience here and stack it on top of your knee pads and your chest piece uh, to be a high enough number where it will make a bit of a difference. For a minor attribute, I roll damage to elites, stack that on top of the knee pads, and you have a build that, in any situation, can also be decent for farming NPCs. And this is one of those builds that you can run around and farm landmarks in the dark zone, and then also go toe-to-toe -to -toe with pretty much any build that you encounter that tries to gank you. So damage to elites is a great thing for increasing your diversity in your farming applications in the dark zone, uh, and major attribute, a little bit flexible, crit chance, um, or if you are, again, really concerned about that predator bleed, which can be very huge, then roll EDR. Last up for gear pieces, we have our Banshee Shadow Armor, and just like the previous two pieces, you can roll the Skill Haste to Exotic Damage Resilience if you want to be an effective counter to Predator's Mark. If not, Skill Haste will increase your survivability as well as your damage, and then for the other major attribute, I always opt for health on the chest piece. There's nothing that can compete with that here. Uh, it's just so much raw health that it really does matter. For minor attributes, since you do have the pieces of Lone Star, ammo capacity really doesn't matter, um, but... You can roll it there. It is helpful to have a large ammo reserve when you're running around farming landmarks. Discussing the gear set bonuses very quickly, we have Banshee with the 2, 3, and 4 pieces, which is 20% looted DZ funds, something that I believe is entirely useless. That's not what the set is about. 
the three piece bonus of damage to targets out of cover which is very important and is multiplicative damage and a really quick rundown of what that means a lot of damage bonuses in this game simply add on top of one another and then multiply against your damage multiplicative damage damage to targets out of cover is one of those so is responsive uh damage to targets within a certain number of meters or prepared damage to targets uh, outside a certain number of meters those types of damage are multiplicative which means that all the additive damage bonuses apply first and then these bonuses will apply on top of those multiplied numbers so damage to targets out of cover is a very strong damage increase stronger in fact than the 10% from something like competent, stronger than other 10% damage bonuses. The four piece is a little bit situational. While rogue, all ammo is completely refilled every 30 seconds. Damage taken from non-rogue players reduced by 10%. This isn't something that you're going to be using all that much. You can use this build uh, and go rogue. It still functions quite well. However, that's not the goal. That's not why I made the video. You will be ignoring that bonuses in favor of, while not rogue, damage to rogue players is increased by 10%. This bonus is increased to 20% for 10 minutes after being killed by a rogue. So you're already getting a decent amount of damage on top of the fact that you have the 10% damage to targets out of cover, which is almost universally active in PvP, by the way, uh, if you have any sort of familiarity with the Division's PvP meta. And then 20% for 10 minutes after being killed. This can stack up on top of all your other bonuses to be a very big deal, and you can drop rogue players much faster than they're prepared for. Now talking about Lone Star and the reason we're choosing this, we have the ammo capacity, which gives you flexibility on the minor attributes of your chest piece uh, here, the minor attribute here on your chest piece of ammo capacity, and the minor attribute here on the ninja bike of ammo capacity. You can roll other things there now, since you do have the two-piece Lone Star of 100 ammo capacity, and then the three-piece bonus of LMG and shotgun damage. That 8% LMG damage may not seem like much, but it does really matter. It gives the build some flexibility uh, and also adds to the already very sky-high damage that it puts out. Moving on to my weapons, you can see that I'm running an MG5, but there are a lot of choices here. You do not have to run an MG5. I run it because it has competitive RPM and because I got good talents on it. However, if you run an L86, I believe that that's the best choice. The L86 actually functions like an assault rifle, so you can kind of fight in a similar method that you're, you know, accustomed to, maybe from running striker or similar assault rifle builds, without changing too much. A belt-fed LMG, while it is a really good choice in some circumstances, is not as comfortable to PvP with. So I am running an MG5. It's a great uh, weapon to use in this build. However, I don't think that it's my, my perfect role. It's not the one that I would choose if I were given access to every weapon with every talent. So an MG5, but I prefer an L86. Now on this MG5, I have Swift, I have Unforgiving, and I have Competent. Unforgiving and Competent, I believe, are non-negotiable. And Competent must be in the third slot because you don't have enough electronics to unlock it if it isn't. So you have Unforgiving and Competent. Those are the, the standard talents that you need to have. And then you have a little bit of flexibility with the third. I've opted for Swift. You don't necessarily have to have it, but because it's a belt-fed LMG, Swift gives it a decent chunk of reload speed and it factors out to increase the amount of damage that I can deal in a lot of different fights if I do have to reload even once by a large margin. However, Vicious is also another fairly decent talent. It works with Unforgiving to kind of give you a constant bonus, whether it be crit or raw damage. Um, brutal if you're confident in landing headshots, all acceptable alternatives. For weapon mods, I have an extended magazine with critical hit chance and rate of fire as alternative stat rolls. Then for a grip, I have critical hit damage, though again, you can opt for reload speed here, especially because it's a belt-fed LMG. That will also have a lot of utility. There's some accuracy, some reload speed, always a positive benefit there. I have critical hit damage and critical hit chance on the muzzle break, and then I have critical hit damage and critical hit chance and headshot damage on the scope, which I believe is the best combination there. For gear mods, I am running all stamina mods with skill haste. This gives me a lot of utility with my skills to heal up my health bar. I am going to be running two heals as well as my med kits. Um, and, you know, it gives me more access to proccing competent with booster shot, which gives my burst, you know, more value and a lot more uptime in a lot of different fights against rogue. So prototype stamina mods with skill haste for all of my mods. If you want to increase your damage only and you don't care about survivability as much, then you can run critical hit chance here. And if you're specifically going for a counter predator's mark build, you can run stamina mods with exotic damage resilience, and that will be a very effective method of boosting your survivability against predator's mark in particular. For performance mods, I am opting to run all pulse critical hit chance. Now, the reason for this is because pulse critical hit chance does interact with one of your talents, and because if you have first aid self heal, you have such a low uh, base amount of health that you're getting back from booster shot it's such a low heal in general 
that increasing it by about 20% for performance mods isn't going to give you any value at all. So pulse critical hit chance, I believe, is the best uh, performance mods to run with this build. For skills, I always run booster shot. I feel that a lot of DPS builds or even tank builds um, or even healer builds benefit from having the lower cooldown on it. As you can see, it's about three seconds lower and from the increased damage and damage mitigation uh, that you get when popping booster shots. So I always run this. It's a no brainer to me. Um, you can switch it out if you want, but I firmly believe that booster shot is the most efficient heal for the vast majority of builds in this patch. I also run the immunizer. This simultaneously acts as a very large base heal to yourself and all of your party members if you are grouped up because it is a large radius if you instantly detonate it. And it is also something that ignores skill power, can overheal, and is a cleanse to Predator's Mark Bleed. So Immunizer as a large self AoE heal, it also has a very low cooldown, is something that I highly recommend for survivability, especially for new players. However, if you do want to increase your counter potential against things like, for instance, Striker, then you should run with a Disruptor Sticky Bomb. This can pause their stacks, it can decrease their efficiency, um, and there are ways that you can counter Predator's Mark or Striker in increasing levels of efficiency just by switching out a couple of talents or skills and this is one of them so if you want to counter striker then run a disrupt sticky bomb for talents i have a pretty standard loadout here i have critical save highly advised for everyone 20 percent damage resistance for 10 seconds is a really big deal if you pop your med kit at the right time i have strike back which i am always a fan of popping skills more frequently so reducing your cooldowns by 20 percent since you will be going to your last health segment on purpose to, in order to get the efficiency from crit save uh strike back is a really good talent and then i have on the move which means killing a target while moving more damage mitigation but you can switch that out if you'd like to um you can put on anything else really if you'd like to have more damage for five seconds by a large margin you can put on tack advance um you can put on something like triage if you are in a group or combat medic if you are in a group um, but on the move is a little bit more flexible and then precision i believe the precision is more powerful even than running an actual pulse on your skill bar so headshot a hostile to pulse them for 10 seconds while it does require you to get a headshot since you do have those mods those performance mods which interact with this um precision can be an extremely strong thing to run it essentially gives you three skills uh while one is a talent and functions on every target that you headshot so precision while a little bit flexible since we have those performance mods is not as flexible and you should run it because it is highly efficient also the way the precision stacks and is uh calculated it's more efficient they they stacked it to a recent patch in the game it, it isn't based off of the current 1.8 numbers um so precision is much stronger than it should be so really strong talent to run here before we jump over to some gameplay footage tests that we did with the build for the final section, I wanted to talk about the primary firepower and the stats and all the different stacking bonuses because I know for a fact, before I've even said this, before the video even plays to this point, there will be people in the comments down below that say, oh, your primary firepower is only 275,000. It's a build. Well, the truth of the matter is, no, it's not. It actually is highly efficient. And I'm going to talk about all the different bonuses right now. You have 22% damage to targets out of cover from the LMG. This is multiplicative damage, and it's very high. 22%. It's not reflected on the meter. It's not reflected on your raw damage on the gun. Um, you're not even going to know that that exists until you shoot a target that is out of cover. So 22% damage there. Then you also have another 10% damage to targets out of cover from Banshee. So that's 32%, and it's active almost all the time in pvp there are very rarely going to be opportunities to even shoot someone in cover uh let alone another player that is then not going to move out of that cover so you're always going to have this bonus active when in a pvp encounter then we have further increased damage of unforgiving whether it be 10 percent or 25 percent situationally we then have 10 percent from competent and we have the 15 percent that we get from booster shot which means that for 10 seconds we can pop booster shot and gain an additional 25 percent increased base damage then on top of all of that we have 10 percent increased damage to rogues and if they've killed us an additional 20 percent increased damage to rogues so all of these things combine to create a build with you know multiple other avenues of increasing damage as well i'm not not considering tack link not considering tack advance um, not considering any of those things you can have over 100 percent increased damage to rogue players if you've been killed by them if you pop your your burst damage with booster shot with competent 
um, all these different things. If they're if you're face trading with them, you get down with unforgiving. Uh, you can have over 100% increased damage to enemy rogue players, and that is what the build is designed for. Not to mention the fact it's actually 102% increased damage to rogue players with all of these bonuses that I've mentioned. Um, not to mention the fact that 32% of that damage is multiplicative and therefore more valuable than it would be were it to be regular additive damage. So all of these things combined to make a build that yes uses an LMG, yes the primary firepower is low on the meter, but this build has a tremendous amount of PvP potential and can shred rogue players. Gathering footage was not quite as simple as some other builds, but a huge shout out to Antiscale for helping me get the footage and for doing all of the testing with me recently. Uh, Antiscale is running a fully perfected min-maxed striker build, so this is not something that you can uh, overlook. And we did start the fight, the one that's unfolding right now in the background, with zero stacks. So in a situation where someone has zero stacks of their striker and you are then fighting them with all of your bonuses, they have killed you, you have your Banshee buff active, uh, you will probably win that fight. You have a large magazine, you're able to dish so much more damage than their heals can overcome, especially when they're starting with zero stacks. Uh, even if there's a couple of people, you just have huge amounts of damage and they're not able to cope with that. However, we decided to be thorough. We did a lot of these tests, many more than what is shown in the video but we did a lot of tests and now we decided to let him stack up to 100 stacks he's using his sasg he gets to 100 stacks it's going to deteriorate a little bit before we start the encounter but we wanted to simulate a striker that's been in a pve encounter or had some time to stack um, and as you can see my optimal range is far better he is using the house he's using a very well rolled version of the house he had full stacks there and i'm able to deal so much damage before he even gets close or even while he is close that stacks higher when unforgiving procs uh so much damage that he wasn't equipped to, to handle it the build is designed specifically to kill rogue players that attack you and try and mess with your farming route another situation that we did that's unfolding uh is one where he kills npcs before then engaging in a fight with me um rogues are often able to stack on npcs and they'll start the fight with a high amount of striker stacks which means that they can heal uh it means that they deal tremendously increased damage uh so it does come down to how you use the build as well you're not going to universally be able to defeat uh, every rogue player that attacks you but if you use your grenades properly if you break line of sight especially um, you do have a pretty consistent at least 60 to 80 percent increased damage on this build especially against rogues and then sometimes it can skyrocket even higher than that um, and you know most most times you're out of cover it really is a strong build so you can deal lots of damage there you as you can see i won the fight again this is a perfectly min maxed full striker classified build that my friend is running this is not something where we made him intentionally weak. This is not something where we decided to, to you know, inflate the footage. Um, again, we allow him to stack fully to 100 stacks. Uh, and there were fights where I lost if I, you know, didn't press my med kit in time, if I wasn't paying attention, um, you know, if I got close and then I missed a lot of shots, I would lose fights. But the build can compete with a fully stacked six-piece classified striker uh, it can be done it really does rely a lot on the player as well um, but it's not um, impossible it's definitely not impossible now it's a little bit different if you are fighting a group of four players it's not a 1v1 situation which is not super likely um, or if npcs attack you you know if you're not alone if it's not a, a you know isolated 1v1 as you can see npc shot me in this clip i did go down the build is not invulnerable i'm not trying to pass it off as anything more than it actually is um, and if you are fighting against a group of four that's you know fully stacked and has a support has final measure has a reclaimer healer then maybe just transferring servers is the best counter um, but when groups flag rogue uh, they're not fully prepared for, for a build like this, and it is super accessible. This build does not rely on anything more than three pieces of, of classified. It doesn't rely on any classified at all, but you can easily construct this even without having even close to a six-piece classified set in your arsenal. Um, the build functions very well. Another application is that you can have so many bullets in your magazine, and they have such high damage, that you can sometimes eat right through a Nomad proc. Um, you can eat right through the healing that people are doing uh, when they pop a med kit and their heal uh, simultaneously in the last cell segment. You can eat right through the damage mitigation because you have so much non-stop damage at your disposal. So that's going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I do you know, believe that this is one of the most accessible and strongest anti-rogue builds in the game. Um, you don't need any classified gear at all, though if you have it, it's just a boost of main stats. Um, let me know if this is better. Some people complained about the Deadeye build said, you know, it's not six-piece classified, but it's five-piece. So 
this is my stab at something that's much more accessible and you know there it does come down to, to player use and how you perform with the build you know your positional awareness uh when you pop your heels it's not just a, a strong rogue build if you use it wrong if you run out of position etc i'm gonna stop ranting check out the upper echelon forums guys and thank you for watching again the upper echelon forums have topics on a bunch of different games we have a, a very rapidly growing community there with a lot of positivity a lot of great members um there's going to be events there there's going to be stream teams featured there so if you want to work with upper echelon uh make sure to go to those forums you can create a topic you can reach out um and that's about it i think we're, we're good check out the live stream if you want to i'll be farming the global event but that's going to wrap it up for today's anti-rogue build uh check out the patron down below if you want an alternative way to support with some interesting uh support to your levels you can have custom shirts with your own gamer tag um custom merchandise stickers things like that uh, just an alternative way to support the channel if you'd like to see more content like this and if you want to support the development of upper echelon uh as we network with other communities partners streamers youtubers etc thank you guys for watching yet again and as always have a nice night